Ladies and gentlemen, the discriminant comes from is basically, if you guys remember, the quadratic formula. All right? And we're going to use the discriminant as a way to describe our solutions from the quadratic formula. So, when, so, far, so far in this chapter, all we've been focused on is factoring, factoring, factoring. And in last class period, we talked about completing the square, right? How can we solve something when we, when we can't factor it? That's why we did the completing the square of creating a perfect square trinomial that we could then solve. Well, if we can't, if we don't, if another way besides completing the square is using the quadratic formula. To find the values of x when y is equal to 0 for any quadratic that is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, then we can also use what we call the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula simply states opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over That's what x equals? 2 times a. That's what your solutions equal. Yeah, your solutions. Right? Where does the graph cross? Does it cross there, there, there? Right? So think about it. Let's look at this. Remember we talked about the solutions. There's three different op options for your solutions, right? <laughs> Okay, let's go through them again. Um, well, there's, there's technically two. If, it, if they're rational numbers or irrational numbers, that's not really a different type, right? That's just kind of like um, being a little bit more descriptive. But basically, you can have two solutions, one solution, or no solutions, right? Now, let's go back and talk about the discriminant because you asked me, what is this discriminant? Ladies and gentlemen, where does the discriminant show up in this, in this formula? Under the square root, right? Here is your discriminant. So let's think about this. Remember what we said? What was the first thing on your notes? I said, if your discriminant is negative, there's no real solutions. Is it possible to take the square root of a negative number? No. No, so that's why when your discriminant's negative, you have no solutions, all right? Then I said, is the, if the square root is 0, well, look it. If you're taking the square root, is adding or subtract? Can you add or subtract zero? Is that going to be the same? Yeah. So therefore, all you're really doing is taking opposite of b divided by two a. All right. That's all you're really doing. When the discriminant zero, you're just taking opposite b divided by two a. Oh. Then, what about if there's two solutions? Remember, I said if it's a square number, then you have rational numbers. So let's think. Let's pretend your discriminant is a square number. Say the number four. Can you take the square root of four? Yeah, it's plus or minus 2, right? But let's pretend it's a non-square number. Let's say it's 5. Can you take the square root of 5? No. Well, you can, but it'd be, it's going to be irrational. It's going to be a decimal. So you're going to leave your non-square numbers under your square root. All right? And I'll show you guys how to solve that. But what I want you guys to understand is like the square root of 5 is going to leave you with irrational numbers. You're still going to have 2, but it's going to be irrational.